Hello! Welcome to a brick wall. Oh, welcome to Pool of Radiance. Yes, the old SSI Goldbox games were released on GOG. I bought them, and I'm going to play them. Um, we are not seeing the short little intro that the game gives us, which is really just a tour of the city of Han. Plan. Um... Mainly because there was uh, quite a bit of bookkeeping I had to do at the very beginning of the game. Um, tweaked a few stats, turned off the stupid portraits that nobody really likes anyway, um, and adjusted uh, to get my income. Because in order to memorize spells, I needed a platinum piece. Never mind the fact that I had a ton of gold, I needed a platinum piece. Platinum specifically. So we are going to uh, not do that. We are going to very quickly buy some swords for our fighters. That's all. Um, everyone else we can equip as we go. This layout is a little chunky. Not the greatest, but it'll work. Anyway, so here we are. We have Bad Idea, Elisa, and Thor, who are all fighters, because rangers and paladins don't exist yet in this St. Bart is our cleric. Wizzo and Morgana are our mages. Uh, this was pretty much the standard party I always did. I never really used thieves in any of these games. I think I really needed them. Um, just about anything they could do, someone else could do better. Um, when we get to Curse of the Azure Bonds, I will be doing some dual, ca dual classing, so my thief will not be a complete base. Um, as you can see, we've got a little window here for a pseudo first person view. We've got our characters over here on the right with their armor class and hit points. Down below that, that 7 comma 11 is our coordinates in the town. Um, we have a little compass, as you can see, and a clock, because this game does have a day-night cycle. I don't think it means much, but it exists, and I believe later games actually expanded on that. Uh, actually expanded on that, where uh, certain places would only be open at certain hours. And as you can see, we have a little area map. And we can actually move while we're looking at it. Which is, uh, rather handy. Now uh, let's see, this is the town hall, I believe, which is where we get missions. But uh, we're not going to do official missions yet, because we need money. And we are going to save the game. And we are going to go into the monster call crawling slum. Now, if I remember right... If I remember right, um, you could eventually do enough combat that it... Either you can do enough combat that it stops, or there's a big fight buried in the slum somewhere, and once you beat that, the random combat starts. Um, try parlay. Uh, um, kobolds are cowardly, so let's be abusive. Oh. So here's combat. As you can see, uh, manual aiming. We have our party. They each have their own icon. And we have rows, ranks. So we've got the three fighters in front and the mage and the clerics in the back. And we have our kobolds. Uh, the kobold leaders are a little tough, I suppose. AC6, four hit points. But not too bad. Um... Movement is eight directional. You can just use the uh, number pad to your eight directions. 
And you don't have to always aim for melee combat. You can just walk into people. And we have a spell. Annual aim. Uh, I don't remember the area. Right. Ah. Thing is, we didn't want to accidentally get it too close. Done. Guard. Because hitting yourself with it is kind of, um, well, deadly. Because a foe that's asleep or held can be instantly killed with a single hit. Plays a helpless goal. Uh, the mechanics of combat aren't too bad. If you move into melee and someone's guarding, you can be hit. If you move out of melee, they get a free attack. And from behind, if they're a thiefy type. Um, honestly, for the time, it's a pretty robust system. Now, granted, these icons that I've got out here have no impact on anything whatsoever. Um, that guy's got a one-handed sword, but that doesn't... That's just his picture. You know, I've got Goofy up there with a two-handed axe, but he's just using a lawn sword. I mean, it's not... So my uh, archer-looking person is not actually wielding a bow. But... Still, for 1988, uh, that's, that's pretty good. Yep, that was a sleepy. And also, they'll surrender. Yes, there's also ally attacking. Yep, see? He surrendered. And you can continue battle afterwards if you want, like if someone's dying or something. No need to do that. Nope, everybody gets 18 experience points. And loot. And uh, not much worthwhile loot. Divvies it up evenly. Oh, but he can take some armor and a shield. Ah. She can take armor. He can take armor. Organa can take some crap to sell. Everything? Oops. R for ready, not E for equip. E is exit. And there we go. Combat's over. For oh my goodness, we are uh, uh more banged up than I thought. Yeah, these games weren't as deadly as say Bard's Tale, but they certainly didn't screw around either. Unfortunately, in this very first game, healing is really kind of a pain in the neck. Um, oh, crap. Wizard down. I guess he's not bleeding to death. Because if they're bleeding to death, you can bandage them.
How you doing there, Wizzo? I just talked about it. Oh, but anyway, uh, the problem with healing is in later games, they implemented a mechanic called Fix. Which cast all your healing spells and then automatically care about power coming. Uh, cast all your healing spells and then automatically and then automatically healed you. This game, on the other hand, you unfortunately have to do it by hand. And then you go and you rememorize Cure Light Wound. You rest. Then you cast it again. And you rememorize. And you can't just sleep to heal because it's one day per hit point. So if I want to heal bad idea 11 hit points that's 11 days of resting. And your character's a Later, uh, like I said, fix made it so much better because all you had to do was hit fix and it would automatically memorize your best healing spells and cast them on the most injured people and then rememorize your best healing spells and recast them, wash, rinse, repeat. It's functionality that is very much me. And I waste it. Well, and you're down by one. We'll just rest. A day. So there we go. We've done two battles. And we are going to items. Apparently short swords are not worth that much. We are not going to level. Even if we had enough, which I don't think we do, uh, because leveling is expensive. You have. I'm not going to bother with plate right now. Too expensive. And it slows you down. Something fierce. And you need a... You are not allowed to draw blood, so therefore you must use a mace. Bash people's skulls in. Suppose I should get you guys some. You're even more restricted. No armor. No rensu. Um, first half, I guess. Yeah, this is a nice old school list. Would you like a Bardiche or a Beck de Corbin or a Bill Gissamar? How about a Glaive Gissamar or a Gissamar Volge or a Glaive 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 Gissamar Glaive? 
Oh, yes, I want to go back and get my money. Gotta remember that one. And so... Do our characters, our mighty heroes, thus are our mighty heroes ready to do battle with the forces of evil. They walk through the garden just. Lums need to be cleared. So-called keep on Thorn Island needs to be cleared. Books, maps, tomes. About history. And that's it. Okay. Uh, yes, I will leave. Right. So... Kill monsters. So, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to do a little bit of grinding off camera because nobody wants to watch that. And this game has a fair ish amount of grinding. So, we'll go ahead and do that off camera to uh, get us, I don't know, level two. Depending on uh, cost of levels in experience points and, you know, cost, uh, we'll see how it goes. But I'll probably grind up to level 2 just to make things a little bit easier. And uh, then we can start exploring the slums, uh, seeing what we find in there. I'm sure it'll be amazing. And if the box is any hint, we'll be fighting a brass dragon. I assume he's in the slums. That seems like a first level thing. So, until then, have a good one. I'll catch you guys later.